Yeah. All the ones that I've gotten free over the years, I've given them away to people. And I got a bunch of them in the hard rocks all around the world. But I probably have about 20 PRSs, and I use them live exclusively. But uh, yes, you know, I bought all my guitars in the 70s when they were just old guitars. It wasn't even really vintage. You know, old guitars were actually cheaper than new guitars because they were old and scratched up. Nobody wanted them. So we just bought them because they sound good. And one of the best things about it lately is that I don't work as hard as I used to. I've been able to go back and pull out these guitars and spend a few days with it and record with it. And, you know, it's, when you're traveling so much, you grab a guitar and then just go to a case where you don't see it for a year or something like that. But lately I've been going through them and playing some of my old guitars and stuff. It's, a, it's great. I, you know, I love guitars, obviously, and so it's really nice to have a few different guitars. Nick Ralph's uh, wife was Nick. How many more guitars So what's the funniest thing that ever happened to you while you were on stage on the tour? Well, one time we were playing in Vegas. It was my birthday, and Ann Nancy hired two giant six-foot showgirls with the big headdresses and the whole outfits and uh, to come out right in the middle of my heart and soul of the night to come out and with one on each side of me and just start rubbing up. <laughs> to play, you know, that's, that's a good one. Uh, one time in Kyoto, Japan, it rained at seven inches in 20 minutes and the stage collapsed on us. It almost killed us. In fact, my parents in L.A. heard on the radio that we were all killed. And it wasn't until the next day when I was going to get older. I'm alive. Our equipment's all ruined. So we're fine. But yeah, it rained so hard. It started filling up the canvas tarp over the stage. It started filling with water. They sent a guy up there with a knife and he was cutting holes in the canvas and the water's coming down. Finally, the whole truss broke and came down. And the back part of it went right to the stage. It put a big divot in the stage. It didn't hit any of us. And then the mid middle truss came down and hit the Tiffany drum. Michael Drozier had a big kettle drum. Yeah. Those are the big copper mm -hmm. braces on the side. Right. It's copper about that thick. Just snapped it like a twig. Drove the casters on the bottom of the drum right through the bottom of the stage. But it, but it held it up. It would kill the drummer otherwise. It could be drum stage. So that's a plant potter. A potted plant for the whole house. <laughs> 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 that drum earned its money. Wow. Uh, what else happened? Uh, split my pants once real good. <laughs> didn't know it. And uh, didn't wear underwear in the 70s. Uh. <laughs> <laughs> so, play along with you. Is it breezy in here? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and my face went, dude. solo at the end of the night and throw up and come back to the last chord. And then all got sick for the whole night. And all kinds of funny things happen to you. Weird plane rides. I don't know if you guys have ever seen the movie uh, Almost Famous. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. There's a scene in the airplane with those guys. Mm -hmm. and, they're and they think they're going down and they don't. That's from a real flight that Cameron Crowe, Nancy's husband, was on with us on a flight that was like that. And we all thought, this, this is it. You know. So nobody yelled at me, okay? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but the guitar player in the movie says exactly what I said to the pilot. Because we didn't have our normal pilot for some reason. Our regular guy who was balls of steel, he wasn't with us that day. Some other guy was flying us. And I go up to the front of the plane and started really rocking. And I looked on the radar, he was red. And I said to him, we shouldn't be here. And in the movie, that's what exactly what the guy said. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty, pretty funny. Anything else? That violin guitar, do you notice any difference that that neck wood makes in the way the thing uh, frets up the neck and sounds like it? Well, my, mine doesn't have a print of you can neck, oh. but uh, mine has a rosewood neck. So I'm, I'm anxious. I played Paul's with the print of you can neck. You know, print of you can is a special tree that grows and they use it for violin bows. It's been, you know, I started hearing about it when I was in college and I took violin in college and my teacher was going, my bow is Pernambuco, it's thirty thousand dollars just this bow. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you know. I didn't really get it, but apparently the tree grows in the exact 
shape of a bow, and they just, you know, it just comes out perfect. But uh, Paul, Paul tests all this stuff scientifically, and he says it's the most resonant wood there is, so it can't hurt. You know, that feels good. I like the raw, like this one's got the raw wood neck, I like that. Mm -hmm. you know, the oils get in there and sort of close to the pores. And I like the tackiness that it adds to it a little bit. What else? What's your favorite hero to pick up? I like the 5708s. I use those in a number of my guitars. I think it sounds just like old PAFs. Um, I haven't tried the 5909s. I haven't gotten those into one of my guitars yet. And like I said, I use the Dragon pickups in a, that gold guitar into my Dragon guitar. And those are a little, little darker, a little smokier. And uh, for my rig, which I run fairly bright, it sounds just about right. They're, uh, they have really good sustain, and when, when you clean it up a little bit, you get